I use the word patiently and obediently. Kwa sababu vijana wa siku hizi mnataka kukimbia. Hatukimbii, tunapanda ngazi. Sijui mnanielewa. Tunapanda ngazi step by step. Eh? You don't be employed today and you want to be a director tomorrow. No. It doesn't work like that. Eh? Kuna vitu vingi ambavyo unatakiwa ujifunze. Your Excellencies, Ambassadors, and the Head of International Organization, organizations are present here, Heads of Public and the Private Institutions. Let me also recognize uh, Professor Samuel Iwangwe, the Chief Executive Officer of uh, the Economic Society of Tanzania, but a very special person to me. He has been my boss my professor and my mentor. <laughs> Distinguished uh, participants, ladies and gentlemen, a very good morning. Jamhuri ya Muungano wa Tanzania. Ah, kwa kweli wa mama mnaongea hivyo. Jamhuri ya Muungano wa Tanzania. Asante. Asante, hapo nimesikia. My job has been made uh, easier by the previous speakers because uh, they have touched on a number of issues which I was also to touch upon, but also I'll be using them as a reference points or examples as I proceed. Allow me to begin by thanking the organizers for inviting me to this very important occasion on how best to improve women participation in productive sector in the economy and with a special theme of this year on peace and security. It is a great honor to be the chief guest and to grace this innovative platform aiming at allowing mid-career women and others to network and learn as it was emphasized by, by Blantina. I'm delighted to see familiar faces and the old colleagues. I've also worked with Tausi. She is my colleague. I've also uh, mentioned about uh, my mentor. But there are a number of faces here whom I'm seeing, and I'm very glad that uh, we are reconnecting. I'm confident that the event will stay true to its promise of allowing everyone to learn and benefit from the interactions and lessons. Distinguished uh, participants, it is well established that uh, the issue of women's participation in productive sectors of the economy or lack of it is historical and is punctuated by both cultural and the structural factors as it was said by Ms. Kamzora. Therefore, gender roles have been stereotyped and, uh, and as being feminine, which affects the division of labor and the allocation of uh, resources within the society. Women are considered responsible for domestic duties ranging from uh, cooking, fetching water, taking care of children and patients, savvy, saving men, etc., etc. For, <laughs> for more than five uh, decades, women are activists across the world have uh, rallied behind the idea of inclusion, equity, and equality in political, social, and economic arenas which define the policy trajectory for human development in our societies. These actions have been necessitated by enduring gender imbalances and inequalities that rose from within the patriarchal societies, where despite their health contribution to the economic life, women have been marginalized from decision-making processes that affect their lives and the benefits accruing from economic growth in the main. To do justice to the topic at hand today, it is critical to briefly reflect upon the dominant development paradigm, which has yielded sustained practice of exclusion of women from critical opportunities for human development over several decades, despite their evident contribution to the economy. Socioeconomic exclusion is not just attributed to the structure of African society, as it was said by uh, Ms. Kamzora, as some would uh, contend. It has been evident in early economic development theory, 
which has been largely influenced by a, a prevailing developed world middle class view. In addition, there was inadequate research on women's contribution to production. The challenges that faced their livelihoods in developing countries, which nourished the fourth the false notion that women's contribution to the economy was minimal compared to men. It has taken concerted efforts, efforts by women activists and human rights activists more generally, as well as scholars to challenge this paradigm thought through global platforms and evidence-based research. Evidence-based approaches which meticulously documented women's economic impact clearly informed national and international discourse on gender and have illustrated that uh, this social construction of gender was ill-conceived. This in turn influenced development agencies to foreground women's concerns and uh, to form a group of social, social movement that, was, uh, altered gen that has altered gender relations throughout the world, through the now famous uh, uh, Beijing Declaration and the Platform for Action of 1995. In Tanzania, we will forever cherish all those who participated in this platform, including our Mama Jetro de Mongela. Regionally, informed by this global imperative, we have also seen our countries promoting gender parity, including in the Southern Africa Development Community, which adopted the SADC Protocol on Gender and Development of 2008, which promotes gender parity in decision-making mechanisms and the processes so that the notion of equality and the equity are institutionalized at governance and the policy levels, as well as within established social contexts to enable sustainability. As a result, of these are changing social and political dynamics. Today, development agencies judiciously promote equality. Activists work to ensure that political rhetoric correspond with the concrete plans and allocation of resources, and they relentlessly advocate for women's political powers, representation, and rights. In Tanzania, we are experiencing a growth in the representation of women in political positions, at present, women account for about 37% of members seat in parliament, member seats in parliament, and they have witnessed substantial increases in women leaders occupying both political and private uh, offices. Statistics also show that uh, there has been an increase in women participation in the manufacturing sector from 3.4% in two, two, 2014 to 4.5 in 2021. I've just uh, taken that uh, time range in the, uh, as um, I was able to get data within that time range. And in the service sector from 27.2 percent in 2014 to 35.2 percent in 2021. And I think that is where Irene also belongs, the one with the security firm in Simiu. This demonstrates a structural changes in the economy whereby women are progressing well and integrating into economic activities, especially in the service uh, uh, industry. There's also been growth in a number of women, women participating in the informal sector, both uh, rural and uh, urban areas, which indicates uh, that uh, the importance, indicate the importance of informal sector in the economy. On the other hand, women participation in the agriculture sector, forestry and fishing has slightly declined from 6.9% in 2016 to 6.4% in 2021. Distinguished uh, sneakers and healers, if I may refer to you as such. With these strides, we need to recognize and appreciate efforts by the government of the United Republic of Tanzania in promoting women participation in social and economic activities. May I encourage all stakeholders and partners, and I'm happy that we have a number of partners in this room. Thank you very much for joining us and for continuing to support the United Republic of Tanzania to continue supporting the government in this uh, noble cause of promoting women empowerment, especially the sixth 
government under the leadership of Her Excellency Samia Sulu Hassan, the President of the Natural Republic of Tanzania, who is also, as you are aware, is the global champion on, of women, economic justice and rights. Distinguished participants, There are distinctive and significant reason, reason, uh, reasons to, uh, for supporting women's participation in development. Foremostly, we need to appreciate that improving women's participation in development is critical not only for achieving social justice but also for reducing poverty. Furthermore, global experience and studies demonstrate that uh, supporting a, a study of the role of women contributes uh, to economic growth and is central to sustainable development. It also enhances child survival and general family welfare. A number of our literature from the recent past also shows that promoting gender equality in development denotes smart economies. If you want your economy to be smart, promote gender equality and the women inclusion. It is also well documented that apart from boosting economic growth, investing in women creates multiplier effects. Women reinvest a large allotment of their income in their families and communities. In addition, there is compelling evidence that women are critical for maintaining stable and peaceful societies, paving way for development to take place. Nonetheless, this is one of the areas where participation of women still lags are behind. The theme of this year's Sneakers and the Hills exposition is uh, dear to my heart. We rarely see women in peace and security sector, and I'm very glad that SSP Rizik is one of those uh, few women in this area. According to the UN Peacekeeping Report of 2020, women make up only 4.7% of military contingent and only 10.8% of formed police unit in U.S. keeping mission. So, Rizik, you're very lucky to be among those at 10.8. This notwithstanding, it is encouraging to note that there is a considerable number of women in Tanzania, she's one of them, working in peace and security sector, and there is an increased global interaction as well as demand for peace and security related services. May I thank the women you and women, Madam, thank you very much for facilitating the development of the Tanzania National Plan of Action on Peace and Security. In recognizing the importance of women participation in peace and security, the United Republic, the United Nations Council passed the resolution 1325. Every uh, women activist is aware of this uh, resolution. It is very famous that foregrounds the role of women in peace-building processes as a pathway to development. To this end, in the area of peace and security, a number of countries have come up with interventions to enhance the capacity of women organizations to contribute meaningfully to conflict prevention, management, and resolution at national and regional levels, but also internationally. As a case at hand, Following consult, uh, uh, extensive consultations in 2017, the Southern Africa Development Community, SADAC, to which Tanzania is a member, and I've just uh, chosen one of the regional bodies, but there are a number of uh, regional bodies which are doing the same, adopted the SADAC Regional Strategy on Women, Peace and Security. The SADAC Regional Strategy serves an overall guide to mainstream gender and the SADAC's peace and security mechanisms and the processes at regional and national levels in order to address specific challenges experienced by women and children. It is, its goal is to ensure that women fully and meaningfully participate in peace and security structures and processes and economic life through mainstreaming gender into peace and security architecture promoting women's rights and their economic empowerment, protecting women in non-conflict, conflict and the post-conflict situations. Whereas the strategy is comprehensive, it requires commitment by member states and all stakeholders to ensure that it is implemented. 
It is one thing to have uh, policies, strategies, and action plans, but it's another thing to make sure that uh, they are implemented and uh, they yield the envisaged uh, expectations. It is uh, uh, good to hear and also to share with you that Tanzania remains committed in implementing national and regional and international initiatives that aim at enhancing women's role in peacekeeping and has put in place policies and strategies and mechanisms to this effect, cutting across sectors including in defense and security. As one of the high-ranked troops and police contributing country, you have had a testimony from Brazil. Tanzania is contributing to a number of female peacekeepers deployed in various UN missions as staff officers, observers, and troops to continue to strive to increase female participation in line with the UN decisions and resolution, the one which I have just referred to, 1325, but also 2242 of 2015 and 2382 of 2017. These include female peacekeepers from Tanzania. Uh, I, she was in other parts, but also we are contributing under MNUSCO, under MNUSCO in the DRC since 2013. In all fields of peacekeeping, women peacekeepers have proven that they can be deployed anywhere and they perform the same roles to the same standards under the same conditions as their male counterparts. Women peacekeepers have had a positive impact and they act as role models in communities, inspiring women and girls in often male-dominated societies to push for their own rights and to participate in peace processes. May I, on behalf of uh, all women, all of us here, commend these uh, brave women who have been representing all of us outstandingly. And uh, may we also commend SSP Rizik in a special way because she's one of those. May you please uh, rise. When she was explaining, I was real amazed. And I said, oh, did she know that I'm going to talk about peacekeeping missions? <laughs> and here I have a, a live example, which is part of our audience. So what I'm going to say is not going to be seen as theoretical. It is uh, indeed uh, has been demonstrated in practical terms by a person who has uh, been part of these uh, missions. It's not easy. She tried to explain her challenges. And I think she was modest. The challenges are more than what she said. They face a lot of challenges, but they have been brave. And we thank you, and we'll continue commending all those who are representing women in this very difficult environment. May I also thank our government for trusting these women, because they would have said, no, you're not capable but uh, they felt that uh, female are capable like a male counterpart and uh, they trusted them to be part of this process and the government continues to trust our female. Tanzania under the leadership of Her uh, Excellency Samia Sulu Hassan remains committed to reach the 25% United Nations target set for female military and police component. We are not there. The target is 25% globally but we have not reached the 25%, so there's still some work to be done. Distinguished participants, notwithstanding the recorded progress, overall considerable work still needs to be done to bring parity to the participation, uh, uh, to participation of women, discriminatory laws, culture, regulations, and business conditions continue to be impediments. We, are, we therefore need to constantly review legislative and policy frameworks and uh, to enhance women participation around these issues to level the playing field so as to speak. There are a number of uh, things which can be done. My remarks will also be shared. You can see some of the pointers 
but what I have included in my remarks, those are just a few pointers on how we may improve women participation in productive sectors of the economy, including in the peace and security. And I'm very certain that as you gather here today and uh, you critically debate on these uh, issues, uh, many propositions will emerge. It should also be underscored that implementation of these um, propositions which we may come up with, but also ensuring that uh, we enhance inclusion of women participation in all sectors, including peace and security, requires an our deliberate efforts and all of us. This gathering brings together a number of prayers from the public, private sector, researchers and academia, and the international organization. We all have a role to play. It is doable. Let us pray our part. One way may ask, why is she saying this while she is the Minister of Defense? I say this because I know and I'm convinced that it's not about the government alone. Government has its role. The private sector has its role. Development partners, they have their role, etc., etc. So we need to work together. Even the non-state actors have their role, and they have done a good job. So let us continue working together <laughs> to ensure that, indeed, we put our heads and our hands together and we reach the targets we have set for ourselves. Dear participants, um, I'm about to conclude, but allow me now to respond to the questions that the organizer had asked me to touch on, and that is in relation to my career journey, as it is linked to days as sneakers and heels exposition. A few words were said by Dr. Tausi. And I'll just try to be brief because if I go into my history, I think I can take the whole day. But I'll try to be brief. And if I am to go to the history, I would have wished to start from a young girl. But let me start from my career life. As a young lady, I started my career as a civil servant, as a government official, and worked uh, in a number of ministries and institutions. And I obediently and patiently, am I using these words, and patiently climbed the career ladder from an officer level to a permanent secretary level. At I was mentioned uh, um, uh, Minister of East African Cooperation, but I was a deputy permanent secretary, uh, planning and empowerment, then uh, permanent secretary, Minister of Industry and uh, by then it was the uh, Minister of Industry, Trade and Marketing, and then I moved uh, to the Minister of uh, East African Cooperation. I use the word patiently and obediently. Kwa sababu vijana wa squeezy, unataka kukimbia, hatukimbi, tunapanda ngazi, sijiu mnanielewa, tunapanda ngazi step by step. Yeah. You don't be employed today and you want to be a director tomorrow. No, it doesn't work like that. Kuna vitu vingi ambavyo unatakia ujifunzi. Secondly, there are challenges. Uh, Taos said that uh, some of us that uh, we live in the middle of our careers. Uskimbizwe na matatizo. Hmm? Kuna, some people had, I have, I have uh, been asked this question many times. What are the challenges uh, you face as a female leader? My response has been the same throughout. I'm a female, but when it comes to leadership, I'm a human being. So whatever challenges uh, my counterpart, male counterpart face, are the same challenges. The only difference is I have other responsibilities which I cannot delegate. That is the only difference. Kama mimi ni mama, I cannot delegate being pregnant. 
kama mimi ni mama i cannot delegate breast feeding and i cannot ignore it it is important i must do it Sasa, those are the only unique eh, circumstances which one face and i would have dropped as thou said it's just i'm encouraging you that these challenges are not unique to you There are challenges which we all of us may be at one point or the other we have faced them. Kwa hiyo kweni wavumilivu na nini mnasonga mbele kama mama anavyosema kazi inafanya nini inaendelea. Nimekuwa maybe moved nimeenda mbali but I just wanted uh, na katika career that is just uh, from a, what, a family point of view lakini like in office you may also encounter a number of challenges. Some of them cannot be shared but there are a lot of challenges don't give up just be strong trust in yourself be confident and proceed zita pita hazita ka milele zita pita na utafanya nini utaendelea okay i was then uh, that is about uh, me rising from my uh, officer to permanent secretary level But then I was nominated by the my government as a candidate for the position of the executive secretary of the Southern African Development Community uh, known as SADAC and uh, that position is not just it was just not a nomination I thank my government and I'm very humbled that uh, out of all those millions of Tanzania they saw that I can be one of uh, I can be the one to be nominated for that position but I competed for that position I was not alone. There were interviews by then I was not a minister, a panel of ministers we went there. Fortunately, I managed to be appointed for that position and uh, as uh, it was said by Dr. Kida, I was the first female executive secretary of Sadak after 33, 33 years of its existence. So you can see that is again proves how the world is uh, male dominated uh, it's not only in Tanzania it's across the globe i've also worked as a consultant a researcher uh, for the i think uh, god uh, has given me this title of being the first now again i'm the first uh, female uh, minister of uh, defense and my journey has been fulfilled rewarding and interesting but i cannot say that there were that i didn't encounter challenges there were challenges simply because i'm a woman nonetheless i chose to remain focused objective professional and to demonstrate that women are capable <laughs> and to show that we are human beings like anybody else with all it takes to be workers and to be leaders like our male counterparts so please remain uh, focused objective professional and to work hard i've dealt with a number of social and economic uh, social economic and political issues as well as peace and security issues in the peace which is the peace and security which is uh, today's topic i've dealt with conflict prevention mediation and peace keep peace building in a number of configuration and the countries this is interesting because uh, when you go for mediation and unfortunately or fortunately i started dealing with uh, this kind of uh, issues at a very high level you're dealing with a uh, very high profile people and uh, you go there as a, a mediator the first thing they'll be looking at you a woman can you mediate and then you just uh, then you just uh, remain cool and then you don't even respond you just do your job at the end of the jo- at the end of the day when they see that you have delivered now everybody becomes your friend so it's just uh, to be confident and do your work you're going and the mediation in this peace and a peace building and the mediation process you just really you may find y- yourself that you are alone as a woman you're surrounded by men don't 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 uh, don't uh, fear men just uh, 
see yourself as a human being, as part of that process, as part of that group, and do your job. We had a number of mediation, you know, in Lesotho, in Madagascar, in DRC, all those facilitation, as uh, when I was working with uh, with uh, Sadak. But uh, eventually, you don't work alone. And the secret maybe as a leader now is uh, to embrace your team. You can never, never, never deliver on your own. Never. However good you are. But if you have a team, you work with your team. Now, when it comes to team, to teams, let us, don't say that I want a team of female alone. No. You need to have a mouth disciplinary team with, an, uh, with a, mi a proper mix. It doesn't matter whether these are men um, uh, or a female, I mean, uh, men or female, just make sure that you have the right team and you work with them and the command authority. Working in these areas enabled me to understand that women dynamics and needs in peace and security are unique. This was said again by Rizik. That, uh, deserving special attention and they can sometimes be better understood by fellow women. A women in those kind of uh, uh, circumstances may not be able to open to a, to, a, to a man, but may be willing to open up to a fellow woman. So having peacekeepers, female peacekeepers, is very, very important. Indeed, women are very are still very few in peace and security affairs, and I thank my government for according me the opportunity and the trust. May I encourage all women and girls to be confident, know your strengths, sharpen your capabilities, and move forward. I'm informed that in our midst today, uh, um, uh, uh, we have owners of security company, one of them presented, and the different land uh, service uh, members. We have Dr. Makakara, who heads our immigration department, I believe they also interact with you and they share information opportunities and the challenges and how to address the challenges while utilizing the opportunities. As I conclude, allow me to commend the organizers, uh, the Economic uh, Social uh, Society of Tanzania and the collaborators, uh, the UN Women, Legal Service Facility, Economic and Social Research Foundation and the LINDAM for a great job in organizing this very important event. May I also thank all the sponsors led by LSF, UN Women, KCB, Optical Center, and the Serengeti Breweries for their generosity. I once again thank the organizers for the, the, the opportunity to share my few thoughts. May I encourage everyone to promote women empowerment and participation at all levels in our society and in all sectors. Kamzora, we heard you that uh, we need also to, uh, to defend people that I'll, I'll communicate to my colleague because that is now under the preview of uh, Minister of uh, Internal Affairs. But uh, thank you very much for the opportunity.